Hello, everybody, and welcome to Honor Thy Podcast. This is the weekly DC TV Arrowverse podcast we do here every single week. I am your host, Declan McKinney. You may know me as DC TV Talk. And with me, as always, is my co host, Dan McCants, aka Milkit Media, aka Mason. <laughs> no news. No news. No, <laughs> let's not, let's not, you know, deface the audience <laughs> so quickly. We have got some news. Yeah, but also, not nowhere we near have as much. We've got a news. consistent audience now because I've been checking the views, right? been checking the views and when you look at the views we're actually doing all right yeah how many views are there actually we're getting between 20 and 30 per episode mate we're that, doing all right that's pretty average we're doing all right no we're not so, you know no. i want to thank you all i'm not you know i'm, a, I'm much more appreciative than this other guy is but well, no 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 I, I i'm just convinced more of the time it's just you hitting that refresh button 25 oh, times oh, 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 sh- 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 right <laughs> move on okay News. We have got some news, but I mean, we weren't really going to get a lot of news after Comic Con. So, first off, we've got some Quentin news, which is something I very much enjoy. <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow will address Quentin's death. Wow. I don't even know if this counts as news. I just no, saw it. And no. It. I mean, I kind of expected them to because, I mean, you can't just have, like, Sarah going from Arrow crying over her dad's death to then in Legends, them not addressing it at all. I just want to know because obviously the tone of Legends, especially these days, very much a fun and happy. Probably show. take the so take the piss deal with the death of Quentin. Take the mick out of his death. <laughs> Someone's gonna take the mick out of the fact it was off screen. Yeah. Uh, just be like Constantine was actually floating around. Um, Constantine killed yeah. him. <laughs> I, I really want this to happen though. I really want a scene like between like Sarah and Ava, where, you know, they're just Ava's like comforting her. And just see set. We might even get some Quentin flashbacks. <laughs> we won't get Quentin flashbacks. He's not on set. But I still really want to see. You know, I still think we might get Quentin flashbacks at some point. Maybe. I, I really, at some point in the future on Arrow, um, or if we get an alternate Earth. Yeah. Quentin, can we just get like Earth? Oh no, Earth two Quentin's dead. Any right? Get um, just get like Earth three Quentin. Just get me another Quentin. We'll have like what they do on the Flash with HR. Uh, with Harrison Wells, just do that with Quentin. Or get a, get a new get a new Quentin each season. Yeah. Or maybe what we could have is just have him and Josh Shigara just show up as like dream figments to Oliver. Like yes, Quentin. Like, like Quentin is good, but conscience. Yeah. <laughs> and Adrian Chase is the bad conscience. I want that to happen. I'd be so down for that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if like I I really wish they would have kept Adrian Chase alive. Imagine they kept him alive and he was in the prison. How good would that be? Oh, that would be amazing. Anyway, off topic. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. If if Orange is the New Black is set in the new same universe as our, I'm fine. Please just make yeah, it happen. Yeah. Odin Chase's is. twin brother. <laughs> He's yeah. in prison with all of them. Oh yes, please. Oh my god. That was a theory a while back about Adrian Chase's twin brother. That was a theory during season five. I remember um, that. That was amazing. That was to do with the whole vigilante thing. Um. So, also, sticking with Arrow, although, actually, that was Legends, but anyway, sticking to Arrow, uh, Beth Schwartz, otherwise known as Best Schwartz. Stop calling her Best Schwartz. I wait, believe in wait, Schwartz. Wait until the season airs, then we can maybe call her Best Schwartz. I stand with Schwartz. Um, she has said that season seven is going to be dark and is going to be going back to the season one tone. Thank you. Yeah, but they said this was season six, and it kind of didn't. I've been waiting for this, though. Plus, also based on the trailer, yeah, it's dark. Yeah, but it, it yeah, but yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's not going to be dropping f bombs like Daredevil did in one scene, or have any blood like Daredevil does. So I'm not happy. Well, we can't all be Titans, can we? We can. So we can. You know, we, we can't. Fuck we the can. justice system. <laughs> that's that's gonna be Oliver. Like when Oliver gets out of prison, he's just gonna turn around to the prison guards, be like, "Fuck the system." <laughs> um, but I'm happy about this. I've been waiting for Arrow to go back to that. And also, yeah. like I said, I think the trailer really shows. Yeah, you, I think you can tell it by the trailer. Palette. Like the color palette is like much more drab, and it's a lot more like dried out of color than what it normally is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm down. Da- I'm down for that. Yeah, I stand with Schwartz. Stop and we'll move over that, to man. some Supergirl news. Um. So the character known as Mercy Graves has been cast, and this is actually Lex Luthor's bodyguard. Now, when I first read this, I got really excited because I didn't read it properly, and I saw Lex <laughs> Luthor has been cast, and I thought, oh my god. What a noob. But no, it's Lex Luthor's bodyguard, so what relevance is that? Yeah. I'm asking you, what relevance is that? <laughs> Maybe Lex will show up later on in the season? 
Nah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> Joking. Nah, they'll, they'll Unless never... it's Michael Rosenbaum. I'm not... Yeah. Because they can't have fucking Jesse Eisenberg. If they have Jesse Eisenberg... No. Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> the red capes are coming. <laughs> the red capes are coming. <laughs> Do you know the oldest line in America, Senator? Um, oh. This, this is just no relevance. I don't really see the point in this character. I don't really know what she's going to do, except for, I don't know, give some stuff with Lena. I don't know. Uh, but she's a bodyguard. Okay, whatever. I didn't. I don't know what kind of contract she's on. I don't know if she's on, like, a regular or... I think she's recurring, she's recurring from what I've heard. Yeah, so... Yeah, whatever. Whatever. See what happens. See what happens. I'm pretty sure she'll be useless. She'll probably be on, like, five episodes. Or something. Well, we I did get know. some Supergirl set photos from the filming of episode one, <laughs> revealing some suspicious <laughs> stuff. So that suit that we saw in the Comic Con trailer, which we all were like, "Oh yeah, that's gonna be Red Kara's suit." Might not be. Oh my! When I saw this, I genuinely laughed. I was like, like "Are you?" Se- yeah, I was like, "Not only does she look like a Power Ranger, are you seriously gonna use this while Melissa is away on Broadway?" It so, is. Yeah, that's that's the theory because she's it stood alongside Alex, Jean, and Manchester Black, and it's like, which confused. I thought Manchester Black was a villain, but I guess maybe he's an anti-hero or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, she stood along. So it's, this is like the body double for Melissa Benoist. Yeah, while she's not there. It, honestly, it's why. Why don't you just write Kara out of the story? Just have yeah. her be gone somewhere, or just wait. <laughs> yeah, just wait. <sighs> You're already like, behind schedule as it is. I know. Just wait. It's just, it's, you come on, it wouldn't have hurt just to wait a few more weeks for her to finish. Like, it's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, the helmet, it looks it looks like a spaceman. Yeah. And, I mean, is Kara in that suit, for one? Are they going to, like, try and explain? Because I want to see them write their way out of this. How are they going to explain this new suit? Where does it come from? Why has he got a helmet? And then why is Kara instantly going to ditch the helmet in episode yeah. two? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's it's stupid. Like it's I see, I see people just there praising this suit and praising this idea. It's even that good. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's just shit. Like I, people sitting there, oh, saying the suit's amazing, <clears throat> Ben. But it's it's like it's it, come on, it's not that good. It's just a rejet Power Rangers suit. That's nothing more than what it is. It's it's just. It's just it's very uninspiring. I think just the fact as well that I think they they should have made this suit for Red Kara. I think and that would have been really cool. And I would really, be surprised it, if this does end up being Red Kara's suit. Like yeah, and we'll see like the genesis of it. But I just think yeah, yeah. the fact they're using it as a body double is ridiculous. Yeah, it's I don't stupid. know what they're going to do with it. I don't know how it's stupid. They're going to explain the Kara thing. I don't know if they're yeah. going to change the suit like with CGI of some kind. <laughs> Which yeah. is just wasting money. Yeah, it's just uh, it's they just don't have. it's crazy. Like, here's the thing: everyone knows that we hate Supergirl. We secretly hate it. I don't it. hate Supergirl. We we I didn't we weren't it. the biggest fans of season three. Season three. Okay. Well, actually, I mean, season one's crap and season two's pretty crap as well. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, well, like basically, it, it, we, it, fin- <laughs> it, fin- it finished on disappointing terms we'll put it that way but then just to see them make these choices is like oh we're going to release a comic con trailer but like 95% of it is season 3 footage or content and it's like oh we're going to start filming while Melissa is away on Broadway by having her stunt that will be covered up in a Power Ranger costume and we're going to give some shit excuses to why she can't show her face it's it's just I reckon I'm just going to watch that first episode and just laugh all the way through it for how like contrived the reasons are as to why she's yeah, just, in that suit. I just can't wait to see them write their way out of this hole because it's just, you know, it, it was like an it was like an Arrow season five when it first started. and They just like wrote everything off like Donna Smoke gone. <laughs> except gone. that except that was a good decision because she is yeah, the she's, smart she is the Jar Jar Binks of the Arrowverse. Facts. Yeah, we better stop copying other people's phrases here. Yeah, um, hey, but it's true though. It is true. It's it okay. True. To, it's okay to steal them if it's true. Shout out to Ross McIntyre. You're a legend. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that'll pretty much do for the news. Um. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for Supergirl episode one just because I really want to see this. Well, excited. We're excited for the wrong reasons. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> I, just, I want to see how they do it. I just want to see what it is and how they're actually going to operate around it because this is be funny. Um. Yeah, Supergirl is my most hyped next season. <laughs> um. So, seeing as we had a lack of news, um, we decided we're going to do two main topics this week, and something a bit more fun and a bit more, uh, a bit more scary on one of them. But um, basically, our first main topic is 
we've both made a list of our top three pre-existing Arrowverse characters to join the Legends of Tomorrow. Now, this is something that I think fans of DC TV like to talk about all the time, which is which characters should join the Legends. And even it comes to the point where it's like, if a character's like being underused on the show, they go, stick them on Legends. Um, that's always the excuse for everything. So we've all made a top three. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think we'll go through them one by one. Um, and I'll mm-hmm. let ladies start. Fuck off. But... <laughs> Hey, hey, you try and call me a fucking lady. I, I'm I'm the manliest person here. I sit um, here I sit here and swear, I curse every time. I can, therefore it makes me a man. So Fuck Declan. Exactly. <laughs> um I've got my list. I've got to start off with the one that is by far the least likely to happen. Uh because they were on Legends and I want to see them return. I know this list is about all people, new people to come on, but simply put, I want this person back on so bad it's Wally. Yeah, Look, I can break this rule if I want because I love Wally, and I'm yeah, really upset. I'll take this. I'm really, I'm really upset because I want Wally back on it, and I think mainly because of the fact that we aren't gonna see him. I think it'd be cool if he just had like an appearance in season four to explain why he's gone. But I think mainly just because I think his character worked really well on that show. Like he was way better on that than he was on the Flash. And I'm hoping I mean, they might explain his absence. Off, yeah, because he, he is in episode one of the Flash, so I, I, I'm hoping they might explain it there. Yeah, because I because I, I, one thing you got to look at as well is obviously Legends finished before the rest. Flash obviously finished afterwards, so Wally went back, and then this Flash season five is opening immediately after season four, whereas Legends will be op- will be starting after that. So I imagine something's going to happen in that premiere that's going to, you know, scare Wally off. Yeah. Or die. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he can't die. They've already addressed that he can come back. And I think Candace Patton has already... I think she, like, said in an interview or gave away somewhat that he, he wouldn't die, from what I've heard. So I don't think they'd kill him off. But I I just hope that, that you know, it may maybe, maybe I'd say if Legends gets to a season five, I think it'd be nice if he could come back not necessarily as a main character but maybe if he could come in for one or two episodes because i think at this point i think i don't know whether it's his decision to leave like did they actually confirm if it was keen alongside decision oh, it, yeah to leave? it was definitely keen and Lonsdale decision. because when you look at uh, i mean even at comic-con when they were talking about him they were just saying oh yeah keenan had like other stuff going on he wanted to explore his career but even when you look at the um like the letter that keenan wrote about it you can see that it was definitely like his decision mm-hmm. yeah um, it'd be nice it's a shame though because I, I, i'd like it to come back because i mean i kind of suspected that he wouldn't come back just because of the way he was introduced in season three because it was like he was introduced halfway through and it was more like rip hunter was like i I just need your help like i just kind of need your help to do this thing um and then even after that i mean after that i guess it was kind of wally's decision because um rip was like oh you can go now and wally was like oh no i'm gonna stick around but still yeah i i i I didn't see it Mm. um even though i really wanted it yeah he's great Mm, they know he's, he's my first pick and that's, that's the reason I put him at the bottom is just because obviously it's the less likely to happen because obviously Keen Lonsdale he's not going to be the Arrowverse this year I'd like for him to come back in the future but I don't think it'd become like on a like a main cast basis but yeah he's definitely someone I want to see back on yeah my number three uh, at my bottom the bottom of my list um, this character I've seen a lot of people will actually push but I just just because of where they are in the universe, I don't necessarily see it. Sure um, although I'd like to see it. James Olsen. <laughs> uh, I mean, I want to see James as Guardian on there. The only thing is, he seems a bit underpowered, maybe. Yeah, the, that would be my argument. Them. Yeah. And also, in terms of his personality, although I love James's personality and I love Mechard Brooks's personality, I, I don't see it blending in with the Legends. He doesn't seem to have the same kind of banter as the rest of them so i don't know if he'd really fit in as much um i'd like to see it and also just give james something to do uh, <laughs> unless they give him this fantastic story in season four that they're saying revolving, gr- revolving around gun control and gun violence <laughs> oh yes please. um i'll take i'll take an entire spin-off show of that um <laughs> but yeah I just, i'd like to see james sort of just I just want to see him get something to do, and if this means taking him on, obviously I don't think he'll come onto Legend just because he is on Earth thirty eight, so doesn't really how he come over to Earth one and then you know blah blah blah. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, just just give James something to do. To be honest, that, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> number two. Oh, my number two is going to be Black Siren. Okay. Because obviously, yes, we she's a series regular on Arrow for season seven. But what I really want to see is I want to see her on the team for a bit, just because I want to see her and Sarah interact more, just because I think it'd, yeah. be, it'd be really cool to see them work together, because that's something, strangely enough, we've never really seen in the whole of the Arrowverse, is like, Laurel and Sarah working together, because they've oftentimes, like, been separated from each other. Like, the closest I can think was when, was it, like, in season four? When I think they'd rest, when they got, like, what was yeah, it? Yeah, the, there is a, there's a scene in season four where they are both suited up as the, as the Canaries, and fighting together yeah I, but I mean I'd really like to see those two together especially because I think it'd be a really interesting dynamic for them because obviously the death of Quentin sorry to bring it up you know to Stop. trigger mm-hmm. trigger your emotions but I think it'd be really cool to explore their relationship and how his death has kind of in a way unified them in a way that I don't think they would have been so before and I think it'd just be really cool to explore that once again, it's a character that I can't really see if they were to appear to stay there for a long-term basis. But I think if it was like over a couple of episodes, like to explore the, you know, like their relationship together, then I, I really wouldn't mind it. And plus, I think she'd be a, a good suit because obviously she's a meta-human. I think she wouldn't be over underpowered because you know the canary car is pretty useful apart from when the plot plot requires it not to be. But no, I think she'd be a pretty good member to the team and. Uh, Definitely more so than James. I'm sorry, but J- James just wouldn't. No, I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like because Black Siren obviously has a personality. She's quite um, arrogant. She's quite yeah. So that would, I, I think that would lend itself like... yeah to like because remember example for when obviously when Mick and you know Captain Cole when they came on obviously they were kind of in a similar situation where they were a bit like this anti-hero character, and I think it'd be cool to put her on there and kind of develop her more into a heroic role. Because then it can kind of like harken back to that first season of what they did with those two. Yeah, I I think it'd be cool to see Black Siren on there. I just don't, I think they have, I think they have grand plans for her on Arrow. I really yeah. Do. I mean, depending on how long Arrow runs, I feel like obviously it's ending seven. next season. It's ending next season. <laughs> oh yeah. So like season seven, I think they're really gonna like wrap up her story, and I think it's really gonna be like redeeming her. So that won't really be necessary. I mean, obviously Legends of Tomorrow will still be going on the arrow ends if it does end the season so you could still ship her off um if you wanted to yeah to trigger the molesty fans that black okay. siren continues just do it for that please just make me happy and then you can put oliver on there and put them to, make it to go together Where yes, are they? yes 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 because you know where's oliver gonna go after arrow ends he's not gonna retire is he nah. second one legends <laughs> and he's my number two no. um i actually wouldn't mind seeing oliver go to legends though even if, even without black siren it'd be cool to see oliver and sarah yeah, together again. Because you just want you just want to see him and Nick Nick Haywood team up again, don't you? Oh yes. <laughs> but I mean, th- I think the thing is though with like Oliver and Sarah is that I think they are honestly like the best. I think that she's like Oliver's like true double. She's Oliver's true kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, kind of adversary. Like she's her. She's his exact. You're not helping me at all. No, I, think, I, I just like to, I like, I like you know to watch you I mean. struggle. I like to watch you struggle. You know, it, it, they're perfectly matched, is what I mean. Okay. Uh, both in terms of their relationship and also in terms of them as fighters. Yeah. Um, that's why in season two, I think that dynamic works really well. So, like, to see them two together, like, I love seeing them in the crossovers. I Hang think on. it's great. I, I love how you're praising this, but whenever I speak to you, you always said that you didn't like Sarah in season two. I did say that before. I did say that before, but as of rewatching it, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was about to say, what were you thinking when you yeah, said Yeah, I did like used to say that when I first watched Arrow. I said I, I wasn't really a big fan of Sarah on Arrow. Um, I only began were, to like her on were, Legends. But I, were you on drugs when you were, when you watched that season? Quite the first possibly. Time? <laughs> but I think you know because he, really he, 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 he was high. He was high. He was high on Benicol. <laughs> and it's just, I, I I love Sarah in Arrow, so I I don't know what was going on. Um, so yeah, I just think their dynamic in season two is great, and I love seeing them in the crossovers. Like that's why I'm quite sad that Legends isn't a part of the crossover this year because they're not going to get that Oliver Sarah stuff. So you know, whatever. But I think it's still cool, and yeah, I, I I'd like to see Sarah. But anyway, that was all about Black Siren. We kind of digressed there. Yeah, um, we need, you need, we still need to find out your number two anyway. My number two is also from Arrow. 
uh, Curtis Holt, Mr. Terrific. Uh... Um, only because I, I put this because one, I think he fit in with the legends really well. Yeah. I think the whole time travel thing would kind of fascinate him because obviously he is kind of like the nerd. Um, I think that there is great opportunity with him and Constantine, <laughs> or maybe him and Gary, because oh, uh, we all know the CW and their romances. Um, and I also feel like you could, I just feel like he'd be utilized a lot more because the legends. I mean, they don't necessarily need a tech guy because they've got Gideon, but I feel like, you know, again, you still kind of need that guy who's going to be out on the field with the tech, and I feel like he could do that. Especially because I feel he's so out of place on Arrow, which is a shame, because I love Mr. Terrific from the comics um, as a character, so I'm quite sad that it didn't quite work out um, for him. Because he always, he's always he stands out to me because he's not good in the field. Uh, he's good back at base, but then they don't need that character on Arrow because they've got Felicity, so... I always feel like he's kind of like he sticks out like a sore thumb for me in terms of Team Arrow, and I just feel like he'd fit on Legends a lot more and be able to get utilized on Legends a lot mm. more. So I'd probably have to stick him over there if I could. <laughs> yeah. But what can I do? <laughs> also, can I just point out as well, Curtis is not in the trailer at all for season seven. <laughs> I know. Fuck, fuck Curtis. Fuck Curtis. I love Echo Kellum. I, I I like Curtis as a character. I really do. I like Curtis. Fam, I mean, he hacked Diggles. Yeah, that is true. Right. His arm, yeah, so I hate him as a character. Back then, I was like, oh yeah, Curtis is the redeemable one. He's the only one who hasn't done anything, and then he went and did probably like, the worst thing out of all of them. Yeah, but could you see? Don't hurt Daddy yeah, Diggle. Hey, hey, it was it wasn't as bad as Justice Events or Horse <laughs> or Renee swinging an axe. Doesn't change anything. Horse. Oh, I've been saying for ages, and I wanted to I wanted to say this live on on the podcast. I've had a brilliant idea, right? In talking about Horse, right? Next year, here is a villains fan fest. If Rick Gonzalez is going, right, mm-hmm. which he might be, right, what we're going to do, one of us is going to buy the photo op, because you can have two people in the photo op, right? We're going to go in together. With a board that says this doesn't change anything. <laughs> this doesn't change anything else. <laughs> we're going to get him to hold it up. Oh, God. That's what we're going to do. That's the plan. We're gonna, if he's going, that's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, God. That'd be awesome. It actually would. <laughs> that is the that. aim. All right, we've got to now pr- peer press you. Heroes and villains now to get Rick Gonzalez to London. <laughs> yes, I, I, I just think it's such a good idea. Like, because that is, you know, that is the tagline of this podcast. After all, you know, it is in the banner that I Ta- put in there. You know, wouldn't we get done then for self promotion? <laughs> nah, because it, it's also a line from the show and it works. And you know, I think I, I think Rick would be down for it. I mean, yeah. he might be slightly offended by the racist comment, but it's it's all fine. I think like we could do it, and uh, as, you know, as long as he can, he can hold it up, and we can both like, I don't know what we're gonna do. I, I probably won't be able to stop myself from laughing, but because <laughs> I'll, I'll be like unintentionally laughing, <laughs> just because I'll be looking at him, looking at his face while he holds it up. <laughs> oh, horse! Right, go on. Do you number three, horse? No, it's my number one. Oh, actually, number one. That's right. Yeah. Noob. He's forgetting because he's thinking about horse. Now I know what your number one is, and it really annoys me because it's also my number one. No. But you said so, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, that's like what triggers you because I've said that. Well, no, because you always give me you always give me stick for this. <laughs> so the fact that you've gone and put it in your number one really annoys me. So before you because do, it's I'm a character, say it. Be- it's Ragman. Uh, all right, all right. This is a character. All right, no, 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 no. You're spoiling it now. This is a character who I would love to see. On Legends, the problem is I just don't think it will happen because the actor is on another show as a series regular. And I was going to originally joke and say it was Bebo who I wanted to join the Legends, but technically Bebo is already a part of Legends because he is the best. Bebo is 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 the best. I'm going to get that out of the way because I love Bebo and I love Gary for dressing up as him at Comic Con. But my number one is obviously Ragman, and like I said. I would love to see him there because it makes sense. Like, I guess we could kind of talk about this together because obviously, you know, he's your number one as well. So I guess we could maybe like back. Yeah, look, look, you've already just practically gave it away yourself. No, I'm not. I'm not sighing at that. I'm sighing at the fact that you have given me so much stick over the, over the. It's because, but yeah, it's because, it's because it's because it's because it. yeah, yeah, but it's because yes, I would love to see it. But the reason I give you stick for it is because you are so hell bent that this will happen, but it won't because Joe Dinkle is on another show. Which show is he on? 
I can't remember what it's called, but I know he's a series regular because he I'm constantly is post famous. because he's constantly posting pictures of it online. And there's like set photos with him on the set as well. So, well, my, my, look, he's so desperate about this, he has to go and fucking research what show he's on. Like, no, no, but I, I would love to see him on, like I said, because I think Ragman was a really good character, and I'm a bit disappointed with the ending that they gave him in Season 3. I mean, Season 5, sorry. Just because, it, like, it kind of came out of nowhere, and I feel like they didn't really wrap up his story in a proper way. Like, I, I just felt like they could have done so much more with him. But I just, I don't know, I don't really feel as if that, that they would bring him back, like I said, just because he's busy. And I think he would just be completely nerfed on Legends as well. I fear, I fear that would happen. But in terms of like characters I want to see join, he's by far the one I want the most. I just don't think it'll happen. Right, I'll take over as the uh, Ragman expert of the two. Oh, um, Ragman was easily one of the best things in Arrow Season 5. He was the best of the new recruits, hands down. Not only was he mature... He actually had a good repeat with Oliver and them and, and them two respected each other. There was a level of respect there because Ragman knew what he was doing. He wasn't some like he wasn't like Rene running around as, you know, vigilante just messing stuff up. He knew what he was doing, right? Ragman, he was experienced. Okay. Now he would fit on Legends so well because when you look at his personality in comparison to the other members of Team Arrow, he would fit the best. Also, he would fit on Legends because all of the Legends, despite Nate, who's the only metahuman left on there. All of them, well, unless you include Constantine now, but all of them, they have something that gives them powers. They don't actually have powers themselves. They have something that gives them powers. So, like, you know, Amaya had the, had the totem, Zari has the totem, Ray has its suit, etc. Ragman doesn't have powers, but the rags give him powers. So, again, he has an object that gives him powers. He'd fit on Legends so, so well. He wouldn't be nerfed because he's not super powerful. I mean, yeah, he can absorb a nuke, but, you know, they exactly. can kind of absorb a fucking nuke. But I still think that he would be the perfect fit. And will it ever happen? No. Will he ever come back to Arrow? Probably not. But I still think that this is the perfect thing. And after Wally left, I was so I was just campaigning. I was tagging all the writers. I was saying, get this man on the show. But it's not going to happen. And on that sad note, I guess we have to move on to the next topic. Yeah, and, and to not talk about Ragman anymore, which I'm sure depresses you. <laughs> But what happened to that Ragman episode of Arrow that we were meant to get? It's Mark Guggenheim misleading you again. Maybe if you maybe if you pester Beth Schwartz no, enough, she will... No, there was the Haven Rock episode. We were meant to go back to Haven yes, Rock. But, yes, but it never happened. We got Honor Thy Fathers instead. We got that amazing fight sequence between Oliver and Prometheus, so all was forgiven. All right, all right. If you want him back that badly, pester Beth Schwartz, all right? Just go... I think I've, I think I've already sent a message to Beth Schwartz about it. I think I might have already tweeted her about it. Then do it again. I will do it again. I need you to do it. Why do I? Why do you need me? I need everyone what? listening to do it. Why do you need me to do it? Because we need an army. No, I want, I want fucking Lorivan, not this shit. <laughs> we need, we need Rory <laughs> on the show. Oh. Face it, it's facts, as you would say. It's facts. All right then. All right then. I'll think about it. I'll think about good, it. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. Right. We'll move on to our other main topic now. Todd Helbing, who is the executive and showrunner of The Flash, he said during Comic-Con, something that was actually quite bold to say at Comic-Con, um, I'm not 100% he's going to follow through with this, but we'll stick with it for now. There are going to be many deaths within The Flash Season 5. Many now, big character deaths, he said. Didn't he? Well, I don't know if he said that exactly. Big? I think, I think he said many deaths is what he said. Which... You know, that could mean main cast members, that could mean civilians on the street. <laughs> but we're going to assume it means main cast members, just because it makes it a bit more fun. So and, what we're gonna and it do gets some views. Go through... Yeah, and it gets, you know, clickbait and that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get through like your all body the main washed, yeah. series regulars. Don't mention his name. <laughs> is we're going to go through all the main series regulars for the Flash Season 5, and we're going to decipher whether or not they are going to be hitting the chopping block. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start off with Mr. Barry Allen. He's dying. He's dead. Yeah, move on. <laughs> right. Mrs. Iris West Allen. Please can she die? <laughs> no, 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 no. What do you mean, no, 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 no? We do not be rude to Miss Candace Patton. I love Candace Patton, but the character of Iris is so poorly written. 
but in season five, she's becoming a journalist again. <laughs> that 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 is true. That is true. But season three and season four, her character was not good. To be honest, I've always been a big fan of Iris. So no, why was she the fucking team leader? Why was she the team leader? She was only there because she served no other purpose. She's led the team. What have you done? <laughs> That's a, that's bu- a, office, right? that's a bullshit excuse, though. This is fucking fiction. This is reality. Oh my! I just hope that somebody out there actually got that reference. But I know you. Yeah. I, I got that reference as well. But the fact is, you're still wrong. You? Yes, because it's off the office. I've watched the fucking office. US or UK, though? Of course, it's the fucking UK version. Only a quality line like that could exist in the UK one. Exactly. Throwing shade at the US. <laughs> <laughs> No, the US version is great. It is great. It's like the only good, like American version of a British comedy. Yeah, especially for John Krasinski. We love him. We 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 love it because of him. Hashtag American in between is a shit. Um, <laughs> it really is. Um, so yeah, I I don't think Iris is gonna die. Also, just because they did it, they did it in season three, so they're not gonna do it again. Mm. Our boy Cisco. I think now, he, I think he could die. Now. I think Cisco has a high possibility of dying here. I yeah. don't know why. There are rumours that Carlos Valdez wants to move on from the show. And this could be his way out. Also, even if they didn't want to kill him, they could still send him off to Earth-19. To refix his relationship with Gypsy. Yes, and they could just become like a guest spot. Now, if they killed off Cisco, that would be a huge loss for the show. Huge loss. I think, like... I think the Flash would lose pretty much its heart and soul mm-hmm. if Cisco dies and Carlos Valdez leaves the show. Um, also, Carlos Valdez was saying that Cisco's power is going to be pushed to the limit it's never been pushed to before this season. Maybe it just gets pushed to the point where he, maybe his body can't handle it and he gets damaged in battle and Cicada kills him. Cicada. I don't know. Cicada, Cicada. Exactly. Potato, potato. Cicada, Cicada. Um, I don't know about. I I think Cisco has a high possibility. I just don't quite know, how, or if they would have the balls to do it. Um, and I could definitely see them. I could see them killing Cisco, getting backlash, and then doing, doing what they basically what they did with Laurel on Arrow and Earth Three Cisco, or whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's looking way too far ahead in the future, but I I don't know why. I just have a feeling. I know that you thought this is going to happen as well. Yeah. Just because, yeah, I've heard, obviously, that, you know, rumours that Carlos Valdez wants to move on. And it was funny because I remember when there like, rumours that he was going to die at the end of the Flash season four, I remember there was a few rumours about that as well, weren't there? Like, popping yeah. around that, oh, he was going to die. But I, I think, you know, it could happen just because I feel like with Cisco this season especially, he didn't really have as much of the story. Like all he really had was his relationship with Gypsy, which they ended Should because the f- because the Flash writers are fucking retards. But yeah, I I, I could actually see him leaving. To be perfectly honest, because I think I think they got to kill off another big character because they haven't really done that for for quite a while. To be perfectly honest, one thing I was looking at is out of all the main members of Team Flash, they haven't actually killed any of them. Yeah, like they've only ever killed. I mean, I guess you could say Eddie, really, but I don't know. I I, I never considered Eddie to be, like, a member of the team. Like, he no. was never, like... No. You know, and same with Ronnie as well. Uh, and then, who did they kill in Season 2? Well, they killed, they, killed, they killed Henry Allen, didn't they? But again, not part of the team. So, they've never actually killed, like... And they always killed the Wells, but that's the Wells, because that's different. <laughs> but... And again, each Wells is a different character that gets introduced. So they've never actually killed a main cast member from the team. So, yeah, I, I think that if they actually, they need to finally do that. I think like, you know, five seasons in, I mean, Arrow, Arrow always kills like a big character in, ev- in every season. Hmm. Like, you know, Tommy, Moira, Sarah, Laurel. Um, Pr- Prometheus. Season five, technically, I guess was. No, Jaden Chase, Dad. And Malcolm Millen. <laughs> and Michael Millen, for what we know. Yeah, Malcolm Merlin. And then season six with Quinton. So Quinton. And, and I was gonna say kind of Samantha for season nah, five. Fuck I, know, I know it's in season six. More people should have died in season five slash yeah, season six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it should yeah, it should have. So Arrow always kills like a big cast member, like 
the reason I think Quentin's death was so impactful was because he had been in the show from the pilot. Like, he had been in it from the beginning. And then to see, like, that death happen was, I think that really added to the impact. Um, and that's why I think Arrow's deaths always have a lot more impact. Like, even, like, Tommy's was really emotional. Moira's was really shocking. Um, Sarah's was really shocking. Laurel's was sad. Uh, Quentin's was my mind, just my <laughs> He's um, still not recovered from it. He's gonna still, watch. I will never you're gonna I'm watch never season six on Blu-ray, and man's just gonna be sitting there with tissues, crying when he watches episode twenty-three. I really am. Um, oh my god. So yeah, I I think this is like the next thing for the Flash to tackle is to kill a big member, and I think Cisco is kind of he's a big target really, but I can't quite put my finger on why. And then there's also Caitlin. I also feel like Caitlin. Is in a similar position. Nah, not not as much as Cisco. The reason I say that is because if they are if they are giving Caitlyn that story that they, that they seem to be going down, although I mean I'll believe it when I see it because uh, they said they've been going to do that for like the past three seasons. Um, it feels like it feels like they're rounding off her arc and closing off her story. Um, also, the fact they're making Danielle Panabaker a director for episode eighteen is like giving her what she wants before she goes no no it's because they're going to be keeping her around i don't know i i think she's in a similar position to be honest no you wouldn't want to leave you'd be depressed if no i don't want to i don't want it i think caitlin's amazing but i i just you know and i love daniel panabaker i met her and um i don't know i just i i feel like she's in the same position i i think her i think honestly i think her and cisco are obviously like the backbone of the show and I feel like one of them has to go, and I feel like it could be either of them. I really do. I think Cisco probably slightly more likely, but I feel like there'd be more fan backlash if Cisco went, and if Caitlin went. Yeah, but you'd cry if Caitlin went because you desperately. I'm probably, you I mean, desperately I'd cry if Cisco yeah, dies. Yeah, 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 but imagine if Caitlin went. The potential of Snowberry would be completely dead. That is very true. <laughs> Although to be honest, it's completely dead anyway ever since West Allen got married. So, although I will say I like West Allen, but you know, Snowberry was was ultimate. Um, I I've got my people. You know who you are. You're out. God's sake, Ralph. No, <laughs> he killed him last season. He's back. Um, no, definitely not. <laughs> I guess. Do you have any any thoughts on that? No, they ain't gonna kill Ralph. They're gonna do it after the whole fiasco of last season. Cecile. No, I don't think no. they would. No, I. If they were going to kill her, they would have done it last season. Yeah. I think. There, there were a lot of rumours that she was going to die in the finale. And that she was going to be... Because we didn't really get a big death last season. At apart, all. From, apart from Devo, which they completely ignored. Yeah, and they kind of did Ralph, but it didn't work. Because we all knew it was coming back anyway. Um, So, yeah. I, I think a lot of us thought that Cecile was maybe going to die during childbirth. Which was real dark for the Flash. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I think if they were going to kill her, they should have done it last season. But they're not going to, so... Yeah, I think Cecile's pretty safe. Um, Nora? No nah. way, no way. Because nah, she has to go back nah. to her time, doesn't she? So I think she's guaranteed as well. Yeah, I mean, if she dies, then that's going to be like a huge problem for the timeline. <laughs> uh, that's that's going to cause way too many problems. Um, and then finally, I've left this one to the last because I believe it is the most obvious. Joe West. He dead, man. He dead, man. Get, oh. get, get them tissues ready for Joe. When this is going to be the Quinton equivalent of the Flash if Joe gets killed off. I mean, Joe is obviously the dad of the show. He is, you know, he's, he's Iris's dad. He's Barry's dad. He's Wally's dad. I just feel like I will, I will be an emotional wreck again when Joe dies because I can't even imagine Barry's reaction. I mean, the Barry's ba- reaction when Henry Allen was killed was like horrific, but with Joe, oh. I'm not ready. Imagine with Joe and it's just a repeat of what it was like with Quinton and all of them. <laughs> what, Barry getting arrested? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just be like the dialogue between them two. Just be like... Just them in the hospital, but... Just, oh. just be like... But Quinton is all of us now. He is. He just is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I, just think... I mean, I've been waiting for Joe to die for like two seasons. <laughs> that sounds really thinking, bad. <laughs> so I was saying this to you before. I just think... I, I really thought he was gone in season three. With the Savitar prophecy, I really thought when Savitar was saying one will fall, I really thought it was Joe. I was like, Joe's gone. And especially because, like, around season three, I was like, yeah, it's about time <laughs> for a character like that. I was like, yeah, it's about time. 
Um, and then season four, they gave Joe nothing to do. Absolutely nothing. Joe had no- he was literally there was one episode where he literally just like came in and just stood around <laughs> all episode. That's all he did. He was basically served for like comedic moments last season with the baby and stuff and like Cecile. That's all he did. So I hope in season five they actually give him something to do. Mm. Well was was Jesse L. Martin at Comic Con this year? I swear he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> <laughs> But um, nah, we'll be like, nah. Yeah, just to be clear, fun. people, that was a joke. We do not want him to die in real life. We no, love we him. love Jesse R. Martin. We love him. Um, he is an amazing singer, as we saw in the musical crossover. Um, I think that I just feel like it's. It, I thought it was his time three seasons ago, but yeah, I'm. I'm like I said, I'm kind of waiting for Joe to die. I'm waiting for the moment. And I feel like it's you're just, nigh. You're just making it sound really dark. Like, oh, I've wanted him. I've waited and wanted for him to die for two seasons. I'm just saying <laughs> it's nigh. It's coming. Nah, you've been too dark about this. Be, being a bit cr- scary now, scaring the younger but, viewers. But you, you agree though, Joe is. Yeah, he's definitely dead because it would make the most sense, I think, because of the fact that, like you said, they haven't really killed a member of Team Flash, and it's kind of like a Quentin situation where you kill off a character that's been there since day one that has like a connection to almost everyone on the team because they all look, kind of look up to him as a dad. So I think it, he's just, just the most logical option to kill off, to be honest. Yeah. The only thing would be that, obviously, you know, with... with, with Cicada or Cicada, however we pronounce the name, we'll just pronounce it Cicada Cicada, just so either way people can't criticize us. But yeah. the other thing is, obviously, I'm not sure if he would be killed by him or not, only because obviously he kind of his main aim is to kill metahumans so he can draw life from them. Because I'm pretty sure, isn't it like only metahumans that he can draw like life from, or is it just anybody that he kills? I'm yeah. trying to remember now. I think it's only metahumans. Yeah, it. it, it... He kills people who were affected or, like, saved by the Flash, it seems. Hmm. Interesting. And one thing, and that's what people were bringing up, is that everyone on Team Flash has been saved by Barry at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so, then. I guess, yeah, then maybe he could fit into that and he'd kill him. It would still be yeah. depressing, nevertheless, but, yeah. I think it's just the most likely one. The most likely one to leave. Yeah. So, like I said, I think it's gonna, I think it's going to be Joe, either Cisco or Caitlin, one of the two. Maybe see, I can't see them killing anybody else because outside of the team, what other like major characters are there that they could kill? They're gonna kill Tracy Brand and Julian Alba off screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, like Julian got like a name drop in episode, said he's gone back to England too. So that and then Tracy Brand still got a lab that gets referenced every now and then because like they sent that bus meta to her, didn't they? Yeah, one point. Um. I wouldn't mind seeing her coming back, to be honest. Yeah, I actually really liked her. I thought she was quite cool. Um, although I'd rather have the mechanic. We need the mechanic to come back. I no. need the mechanic to come back. She yes. s- she stabbed me. Yeah, but they had a hug at the end. It's all good. And she stabbed herself, actually. Yeah, that's true. But you know, they all had they had a little they had a little cuddle at the end. They're all good. They're all straight. I think they'd just be. I don't know what it is. I just think Kim Engelbrecht is so good. <laughs> I think she was like. Because in the Flash season four, which was just a menagerie bullshit, <laughs> I think just to have like such a standout like Kim Engelbrecht, just to actually steal the just steal the episode every single time she was there. I just need I need more of her on the show. I I really wanted her to stick around. Um, and I I think base I think she will come back next season at some point. Hmm. Just even like Todd Helbing was like, yeah, we'll probably try and bring her in at some. Point. Um. I mean, that's pretty much the way he says things anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll do it at some point. Um, but yeah, maybe they could kill her. Well, that'd be quite tragic. That'd be a massive waste of a character. I'm trying to think, like, who else could they kill? Sing. Captain Sing. <laughs> yes, he's going to die. Sing's going to die. I can't yeah, do that. that. That's it. Now nah, Sing's going to die. He's 100% going to die. Why do you want him to die so much? I don't want him to die. I love Sing. <laughs> Sing's, a, Sing's a legend, but... I'm sorry, yeah. Now now that you bring it up, Singh's going to die. And he's been there since, like, the pilot as well, I think, so... Yeah, he's dead. Like, he's been there since, like... Hasn't he been there since, like, the Arrow episode? When Barry showed up on Arrow? Hmm. I think it was. And he was actually in Arrow Season 1 as a completely different character. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. Like, I, when I rewatched Arrow... 
same guy. You yeah. Actually, yeah, you actually find out that he's it actually is the same character. <laughs> yeah, it's, nah, it's his brother. It's Depo, his brother. <laughs> that actor, though, he gets around, doesn't he? Like, he's in, like, so much stuff. <laughs> yeah. So many I, like, things. I swear he's in, like, a Marvel TV show at one point. I'm probably going to have to look that up, actually. Yeah, because he, he's in, like, loads of stuff. He's in, like, loads of movies and loads of just like shows up in everything um yeah anybody else i'm trying because again with the flash like all of like the main cast members like all the major characters who you actually care about series regulars like they're all the main cast members so it's just kind of hard to look anybody out outside of that because there isn't really any other characters outside of it so like i like i said i think sing like you say is the only one really so Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it's, it's it's Joe, he's number one, then like Cisco or Caitlin, Sing. Yeah, it's got it's got to be, because they're the only ones for me, really, that like you can class as, oh, these are big characters, but like aren't completely influential like to the show itself, so you can kind of get away with doing it. Barry saves Sing a couple of times, doesn't he? Yeah, so he, he, he can count. <laughs> he's a target, he's a target. So... I'd say that wraps up the episode. Yeah, our shortest episode on record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of expected that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, there's no news, and yeah, these topics were just kind of short and sweet. Um, but yeah, if you have any topics for us to discuss, make sure you leave them in the comments down below, because um, we're struggling. And we <laughs> so make sure you send in all of your thoughts, because like you say, if you want to help us out, you want to help your fellow hosses out, then make sure you send us a quick little message in the comments and we'll see what we can get to fellow yeah. hosses come on fellow hosses that's our fan base name the hosses the hosses that's the fan base name so the hosse. everybody watching you are officially a hoss it's not the posse it's the hosse exactly the hosse the hosse patrol <laughs> um, the hoss patrol that's it the hoss patrol oh god ltd um <laughs> There we go. So if you're watching this and you're a fan of Honor Thy Podcast, you are officially a hoss. And make sure you tell all your friends and family and they will not disown you, I swear. (laughs) And with all that said, that was the episode. So yeah, next week we'll come back, we'll do some more fun stuff like this, a bit more fun and interesting topics to discuss on top of hopefully we'll have more news next week. Um, Although I feel like news is going to be dead for a few weeks now. Oh, definitely. So yeah. But that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. But anyway, with all that said, I have been your host, Declan McKinney, otherwise known as... And I have been Dan McCants, even though Declan has just cut out on my line like an absolute idiot. Uh, you, you, write, you read that out. You, you know, you wrote that out smoothly. It's all good. <laughs> with all technical jargon out the way, we will see you guys next week. See you.